So we are going to prove an identity that has to do with the beta function of a and b, which says that the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the a minus 1 times 1 minus t to the b minus 1 dt equals a minus 1 factorial b minus 1 factorial over a plus b minus 1 factorial. And this is the second important identity for the really cool series video coming up. Now to start, we're going to use induction to prove this identity but we're going to do it only with respect to b. So we'll basically say throughout the whole proof that the value of a can be whatever it wants to be, and we're just going to look at what happens to b. Now for induction, first of all, we need a base case. So we're going to let b equals 1. That way, when we do the integral from 0 to 1, we'll get t to the a minus 1, and then 1 minus t, b is 1, so we get 1 minus 1 is the power, which is just a 0 dt. And then if we take anything to the power of 0, that's just 1, so we can ignore this multiplication. And that gives us the integral of t to the a minus 1 is just t to the a over a. We evaluate that at 1 and 0. Well, 0 to the a is just 0, so we can ignore that. And we're just going to get 1 over a. Now we want it to be in this form. So to start out, we want an a minus 1 factorial on top. Let's just multiply it on the top and bottom. So we get a minus 1 factorial right there, then a minus 1 factorial on the bottom. And this is going to be equal to, well, on the top, we get a minus 1 factorial on the bottom. a times a minus 1 factorial is a factorial. Now we also want a b minus 1 factorial, but b is 1, so that's just going to be 1 minus 1 factorial, which is 0 factorial. And because 0 factorial is 1, we can multiply it on the top without worrying about anything because it doesn't have any effect. And now we want a plus b minus 1 factorial on the bottom. So let's write the a factorial as a plus 1 minus 1 factorial because now this 1 right here, that is our b. And therefore we have proven the base case for b equals 1. It's time for the induction step. So for induction, we're going to assume that the identity is true for b equals n. And we want to show that if it's true for b equals n, then it must be true for b equals n plus 1. That means we're going to look at the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the a minus 1, and then we'll plug in n plus 1 to b. So we get n plus 1 minus 1 is just an n as the power dt. Now we know that this identity is true when we have an n minus 1 in the power, but we have an n right now. So how can we get this n to an n minus 1? We can take the derivative. And that means it's time for integration by parts. So let's think about what we want to differentiate. We want to differentiate 1 minus t to the n. Because we know if we do that, we'll get n times 1 minus t to the n minus 1. And then by the chain rule, we multiply by a negative out front. But now the power is exactly what we want. We can apply this identity. Now we want to integrate the rest of it, so integrate t to the a minus 1, and that's going to give us 1 over a times t to the a. And now it's time to plug all of this information in right here. So to start out, we get 1 minus t to the n times 1 over a t to the a at 1 is 0, and then we're going to do minus a minus is plus the integral from 0 to 1 of, we get an n times 1 minus t to the n minus 1, then we have 1 over a times t to the a dt. Now let's take a look at this part right here. First of all, what happens if we plug in 1? Well, 1 minus 1 to the n is 0 to the n, which is just 0. So this is going to vanish, first of all. Then, for the lower bound of 0, if we plug in 0 to t to the a, 0 to the a is also going to be 0 for any positive integer. Therefore, this entire part right here goes to 0. We can completely ignore that and focus on our integral right here. And notice, if we factor out n to the a from our integral, we get the integral from 0 to 1 of t, and then I'll write a as a plus 1 minus 1. Then we have 1 minus t to the n minus 1 dt, just like this. And remember I said at the beginning that we're going to assume a is whatever it wants to be. We've proven this base case no matter what a is, and we're assuming that this identity is true no matter what this number right here is. So the fact that there's an, an, an a plus 1 here instead of an a does not concern me at all. We can still use the identity. But because the power here is now n minus 1, which is exactly what we want to apply our identity for b equals n, it's time to use that induction hypothesis. So 
That means we can evaluate this integral right here as this identity. First of all, what we originally had as a is now a plus 1. So we're going to get a factorial, first of all, because we have a plus 1 minus 1. Next up, we have b minus 1 factorial, or n minus 1 factorial in this case. Then we divide. a is going to be a plus 1. Then we get plus n minus 1 factorial, just like this. So let's simplify this a little bit. To start off, if we look at the a's here, we have an a factorial divided by a, which is going to give us a minus 1 factorial. Next up, we have n times n minus 1 factorial, which will give us n factorial but I'm going to write it as n plus 1 minus 1 factorial. And then in the denominator, we're going to have this factorial right here. And I'm just going to move around the order of these pluses and minuses. To start off, I'll have a plus n plus 1 minus 1. And we'll put parentheses right here, factorial. And the question is, is this result the result that we want? Well, notice that we're plugging in n plus 1 to this identity right here. We have a minus 1 factorial like we expected, and then we have n plus 1 minus 1, just like we want, and then this a plus n plus 1 minus 1 is also exactly what we want, which means that we have proved the induction. If it's true for b equals n, we can show that it's true for b equals n plus 1. And therefore, by induction, we know it's true for b equals 1, therefore it's true for b equals 2, b equals 3, for all positive integers a and b, this identity will always hold.